Hello friends and welcome to this edition of Kingdom Kids at FCC. Have you ever thought about why God blesses us? Why does God do good things for people? Today, as we get back into our lessons from the Bible, we are going to look at King Solomon. Before we do, however, we want to play a game that shows us about blessings. Today, we're going to play a three-legged race. Some kids are blessed with more athletic ability, are taller, or have another skill that helps them. But what if someone else depended on those skills? Let's see how the Kingdom Kids do on this race. If there are other kids in your area, why don't you try it with us? Are you two going to make it? Hopefully from our game, we learn that we can use the blessings that God gives us, whether physical or otherwise, to help others get to the goal, which is Jesus. Today, we're going to finish our journey through King Solomon's life. His father was a king who wasn't perfect and went through many trials, but always went back to the Lord with all of his heart. Solomon, who didn't seem to have very many trials and was blessed beyond even his father David, however, chose a different path. God had blessed Solomon with wisdom, and in that wisdom, God made Solomon wealthy and powerful. He had peace with surrounding nations. Many nations sent people to listen to Solomon's wisdom, and Solomon made his people wealthy. God allowed Solomon to build him a grand temple and even a palace for himself. On top of great wisdom, wealth, and power, God blessed all that Solomon put his mind to accomplish. Yet Solomon began to focus on his success. He married many wives of foreign lands for political purposes and began to build altars and temples to their gods. He even began to worship at them. Even though he was given great success by God, he stopped following God's laws and began to seek after his own fame, power, and fortune. Solomon married 300 women and even had relationships with 700 other women. Talk about greed. God called this worship of other gods and wealth evil in his sight. Because he married all of these women and worshipped their gods and became conceited in his wealth, wisdom, and power, and also because Solomon didn't keep God's commands, God again spoke to Solomon. Because you have done evil and not kept my covenant or my laws, I will surely tear your kingdom away from you and give it to your servant. I will not do it in your days. For the sake of your father David, I will tear it out of the, son, the hand of your son. God, though he judged Solomon, also had mercy. I will, however, not to the whole kingdom. I will give one tribe of Israel to your son for the sake of my servant David and for the sake of Jerusalem, which I have given. Because of his betrayal, God raised up an enemy for Solomon, Hadad the Edomite, the son of an enemy of David. He was raised in Egypt and found favor in Pharaoh's household. When Hadad had grown powerful, he left Egypt and fought against Solomon's forces. Another enemy was also raised up, a man named Rezon. He became the king of Syria and gave Solomon trouble, on top of the trouble caused by his dad. On top of that, a servant of Solomon's named Jeroboam rebelled against Solomon. 
God raised him up to be a rival of Solomon's son and sent to him a prophet named Ahijah, who cut a garment into twelve pieces and said, Take for yourself ten pieces of garment, of this garment, for this is what the Lord says. Watch, I will tear the kingdom out of Solomon's hand, and will give ten other tribes to and of Israel to you. He will have one tribe for the sake of my servant David, and for the sake of Jerusalem, my chosen out of all the tribes of Israel. I will do this because Solomon and Israel have forsaken me and chased after other gods to worship, and they have not walked in my ways or done what is right. They didn't keep my laws and judgments as David did. I will not take the whole kingdom away from him because I have made and ruler all the days of his life for the sake of my servant David, who I chose because he kept my commands and walked my laws. But I will take the kingdom out of his hand and give it to you. Ten tribes. And to his son I will give one tribe. That my a servant David will always have a lamp before me in Jerusalem. The city I took for myself will put my name there. If you obey me, Jeroboam, walk in my ways and do what is right in my sight. To keep my commands and laws as my servant David did. Then I will build for you a house that lasts forever. Just as I have done for David, and I will give Israel to your descendants. I am punishing the servants of David because of Solomon, but not forever. Instead of trying to make things right with God, Solomon tried to kill Jeroboam, but he escaped. Do you see what happened to Solomon because he followed his own desires and not what God wanted? God wanted to bless Solomon, but Solomon took the blessing and honored himself. Even though Solomon sinned and his son lost the kingdom David and Solomon had built through God's power, God kept his promises and Jesus came through the line of David, our eternal king who sits at God's right hand. We want you to know that even if you make mistakes and rebel against God, if you just return to him, he will forgive you. If you've never given your life to Jesus, he's waiting for you. If you hear him calling you, go and speak to your preacher, a leader of your church, or your parents, and follow Jesus today. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make your paths straight. Proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 through 6. If it breaks, you just need to figure out how to try to keep it together to be one leg, I guess. <laughs>